It took me a while to finally decide to jump into this journey, to start a podcast, to talk about things that trigger so many people and inspire others equally. I don't have any idea of how this channel will evolve, but for now, I will present the content in two different capsules, the cinematics and the podcast. The cinematics are trailers, short introductory videos on a specific topic that I will usually develop later in a dedicated podcast capsule. I will try to have a coherent structure on the topics I want to cover, but due to the complexity of the information, sometimes I will diverge towards other topics, personal experience, etc. So, I'm glad to welcome you, and please grab a coffee, a tea, or a cup of wine, and feel free to open your mind. Even if I find the video format the most complete and efficient one, I still like the concept of the old-fashioned radio format to inspire you to get up from your computer or smartphone screen to be active and dynamic if you like while you're listening to the show. Considering that this is my first ever podcast emission, I would like to make a surface review, a collage on some of the topics I will cover in the future to get warm and familiar with concepts that may be a bit strange in the beginning. Some of the ideas I'm about to share with you embody my personal belief system. Others are just anecdotes and many just mythology. I'm not linked to any kind of political party, religion, dogma, ideology or institutional creed. But I must declare, as I always do, that love, truth and justice are my gospel. And I'm not here to persuade you to believe in anything I'm about to share but I will touch on sensitive topics that may trigger your belief system and distort your perception of reality. However, I encourage you to make your own conclusions, not only here, but throughout your entire life. So without further delay, let's get into it. The world as a stage illusion. I believe many of you are familiar with concepts like parallel dimensions, timelines, esotericism, astrology, shamanism, and quantum mechanics. Maybe not in depth, but I'm sure you hear about it. Because to get into the matter of this podcast, you should be prepared to deal with some abstract concepts that sometimes will require an extra level of attention. Alter dimensions allude to the unseen the secrets beyond the veil, the players and the rules in this game. It's a particular and alternative story about the nature of reality and our participation in this cosmic production. Knowledge and wisdom, old as time itself, shared generation through generation, but persecuted and distorted by the ones in control of the game these days. The game masters, so-called the elite, secret societies, the cabal, corporations, or simply the establishment. This is the same old dramatic and romantic story about dualistic forces, but from a different perspective. My goal towards the podcast is to deliver the message in a creative and updated fashion for our times. The structure. Many believe that things at some point went wrong along the way in our modern civilization, blaming corruption, terrorism, selfishness, and so forth claiming that the state of the world is the consequence of behaviors inherent to human nature, that as a species we are doomed to self-destruction and extinction. But in fact, modern civilization as we know has been designed and established from its foundation to distort the core values and integrity of mankind. We have experienced a gradual process of dehumanization for the last two centuries, sugar-coated as the standard slogan of progress, the best for everyone. We rather say at this point, the beast for everyone. Losing fundamental rights in exchange for security and protection against made-up enemies provided by those who created the conflict in the first place. A pretty old method of manipulation and submission, and the longest enduring slogan in politics, educate, agitate, organize. In other words, to create a problem, to trigger a reaction, to bring their solution. That formula has been applied to nearly every stage event in our recent history, and sadly, has been the most effective method when it comes to social engineering. The establishment consists in a well-organized network hierarchy that works 24-7 to keep the illusion and the machine ongoing, 
a dream machine that highly depends on society's mental and emotional implication. To entangle like a spider web, the grid, the fabric of reality. So the more individuals are involved in this collective incantation, the more complex, strong, fixed and substantial the manifestation of this wicked reality will be. And here is when people get lost. Because as a general rule, if you avoid to recognize the forces that work in the shadows and how much influence they have in the collective's life, they will never understand the bigger picture. The establishment is our nemesis. It's an archetype of the antagonistic forces against evolution and preservation of life. It's a mental virus against imagination and creation. And his assignment is the corruption and distortion of the laws that constitute the natural order, the light from source. It's like a cosmic soap opera, and his representation is this shit show we call modern world, with a cast of the most pathetic characters ever, horrendous art direction, and the most terrible soundtrack ever composed. As far I know or remember, nobody asked me if I wanted to watch this fucking low-budget production, but here I am, like it or not, taking part of the cast, as well as you guys. The last three years. The last three years has been literally like walking into a weird and reverse parallel dimension, an upside down world, similar to concepts like the Stranger Things show, though for me has been like this my entire life. Aside from the deceptive health operation of 2020 that everyone has been forced to be familiar with, there are many other deceptive events that people are unaware of. Or, they're still stuck in what I call the VIP zone, the very ingenuous people's zone, or plain and simple, they don't give a fuck. It's some kind of new paradigm of evilness and mediocrity, and people are dedicated to it. Like the more ordinary you are, the more celebrated you get. It's like a great new skill to be an idiot. Not to mention the demonic narcissistic army that is taking over the soul of the collective. Nonetheless, even Lucifer is in profound shame by the lack of art and beauty of these strange times. In addition, the levels of corruption are so high these days that has been accepted and normalized as a natural social behavior. People tend to talk about corruption as if it were something exclusive to the political spheres, but many don't realize that corruption occurs in institutions such as education, law, defense, health, science, entertainment, and many more. Corruption is the disease, is the cancer of our society, already in metastasis due to the lack of values and honor. Even the soul can be corrupted, just by being exposed to toxic media content for a long period of time, Normalizing murder as a human tradition in the collective's mind, desensitizing their emotions towards perversity by exposing them from an early age to continuous aggressions against brothers and sisters through psychological operations. As a general rule, there's no chance for you to reach a position of power in any of those institutions I mentioned before, unless you are part of their family bloodlines, corrupt or corruptible. You can be the most amazing artist, teacher, or scientist on earth, but if you don't agree with the holy dogma and the messianic agenda, there's no place for you in the club. Because it's not about finding the cure for the disease and being a hero. It's actually to design intelligent and programmable diseases that can be triggered in the right place at the right time. So that places us in a very vulnerable position to believe, agree, and even pay for any kind of bullshit they throw on us in the media coliseum of entertainment, abusing their principle of authority, creating confusion and dissociation as never before in human history. Let's take a look at the ongoing script. Science is debating if reality is a thing or a simulation. Security agencies are in conflict with alien life forms while the experts are anticipating worst-case scenarios for artificial intelligence. I truly believe we can all agree we are living in a strange times. Aliens And talking about dissociation, now according to the mainstream media, we are facing an alien invasion. 
UFOs, UAPs, OVNIs, intelligent officials, and Tom DeLong from Bling 182. What the hell is going on here, guys? Well, this quote unquote disclosure is just part of a huge distraction operation, I guess, that nothing has to do with any extraterrestrial life forms, or at least a legitimate one, if that is a thing. Like the Roswell incident in 1947, originally named as Project Mogul, apparently a meteorological globe accident covered up by a fairy tale of extraterrestrial crash. In fact, the meteorological globe ends up being a reconnaissance satellite globe. So far, the only way to put at high altitude autonomous communication artifacts, aside from solar powered drones like Starlink technologies. Yes, I said drones. So they reinforce the Roswell extraterrestrial narrative with ridiculous alien puppets, way less credible than any Muppet character, and pretty ugly and disturbing beings based on interdimensional demonic entities described in 1917 by the British Windsor's family favorite warlock, the beast Alistair Crowley, a character that may well deserve a dedicated podcast in the future. Similar shit show we had recently in the Mexican parliament by the hand of tricksters that have more to do with the green of a dollar bill than the green of an alien form. We have seen a substantial escalation of a strange sky phenomena in the last years. Coincidentally, the last three years after the foundation of the United States Space Force in 2019 by the establishment superstar Donald Trump. The same year, Starlink deployed their so-called satellite grid in a number of 5,000 units, but with 42,000 in mind for the future. Remember, the beast for everyone. And before getting into the next topic, I would love to remind you that there's not a such thing as disclosure of true classified information. Anything that will affect the script, the agenda or the establishment in a negative way will never meet the sunlight. Don't forget that the world is subordinate to the establishment, and the establishment is a private corporation. Forget about the national flags, because in reality they don't represent the cultural values of the nation. They just represent the geopolitical role they are gonna play in this wicked game. Did you ever ask yourself why do we have so many esoteric symbols like pentagrams in the national flags? I'm sure you don't. So stop playing the fool with this crap, as well with the illusion of democracy and the power of choice. At least for now, we can choose the color of our digital avatar in the bullshit verse of our times. The Social Networks I remember a time not long ago when online social interaction was a thing. Or that was the purpose of applications like Facebook, a common space for social discussion, where people engage in different topics and share their experience in a more quote-unquote natural fashion than today. And I personally think it was a great idea, but the reality is that it was just a stepping stone to a deeper layer of manipulation. In fact, Facebook is merely an establishment tool, like the rest of mainstream applications. They needed a global database with everybody in it, like the most complete intelligence agency database ever, which even Stalin never dreamed of. And the brilliant thing is that they didn't have to chase anyone to map their face and put their info in the database, because the trend pushed everyone to be part of the show, so the selfie photo mode became the most ridiculous and successful intelligence operation ever applied on society. And I'm so sorry to say this, but we have to recognize it was fucking brilliant. On the other hand, they needed a place for polarization of opinions, because we all know that humans are pack creatures and misery likes company. The perfect stage scenario to make you believe that a large number of people agreed to go against common sense and rationality. But to be honest, I think common sense has gone long time ago anyways. Back to Facebook. At first, people didn't buy it at all, as always happens when something new comes out of the blue, to the point that the establishment had to produce a silly $40 million movie to motivate people to join the application. Then, 
they politicize it and use it to convince public opinion to invade other countries and recreate fake revolutions like in Libya. A public opinion that in general celebrate the uncovered demise of a country they never heard before in their life, followed by radicalize politically, religiously and sexually those invaded countries to plant the seed of discord and resentment towards Western culture. And after a few years, they harvest distorted and single males to send over Europe inside the Trojan horse of humanitarian reasons. So the Islamic hided cells that they are scarce about in the time frame of 9-11, 20 years ago, is now a thing all over Europe. And they have nothing to do with any radical Islamic boogeyman. This is pure social destabilizing operations, a silent invasion and an imminent perfect storm. Just take a look at France, Netherlands or Scandinavian countries today. It's all about the destruction of the culture and lifestyle of European countries. This is the big reset they are talking about. So after accomplish those stages of the agenda, they began to disapprove Facebook, claiming that it's just a trinket market for cat people, pushing new generations towards the next level of the social applications. It's over 10 years since Instagram hit the market, promoted as an image-based social network, claiming to be a photographer's paradise for their art and promotion. But as always happened with mainstream applications, it surprisingly turns into an unexpected and different creature after a while, like a cute gizmo having dinner after midnight, a fluffy creature that suddenly becomes a demonic gremlin. Let's pay attention to the name Instagram. It sounds like pentagram, don't you think? The instant gratification pentagram, the social network. Just pure modern witchcraft, if you ask me. So the photographer's paradise ended up being a narcissist pool party, where many has been gradually losing their sanity and their dignity by chasing unrealistic expectations like beauty standards and artificial social status, developing serious issues like short attention span and multi-personality disorder, a big deal regarding society's mental and emotional health. And this is not a side effect of an unconscious use of the application, it is the living proof of the efficiency of the tool for what it has been created for. Don't forget the slogan, the beast for everyone. I'm talking about the beast and emotional health. We should not exclude from the narcissist equation social applications like Tinder, yet another application that is contributing with our society, holistic health. If you want to have the ride of your life and wants to try something different, exciting, of what a karmic relationship pool have to offer, you should immediately download the application and wait for your match. Maybe you can win the jackpot and date someone cute, authentic and spiritually unbroken. Why not? But most of the time you will end with a beautiful vessel full of toxic surprises. Do not dismiss the intelligent power of the algorithm, because for some strange reason it knows what is good for you better than yourself. The New Age Spirituality In response to the state of the world and the decline of traditional religions or other kinds of faith, new form of mystical disciplines emerge to compensate the lack of spirituality in society. And here's when exotic traditions come in action, as if we're the ultimate canon for truth and spiritual enlightenment. It is not a new thing, but lately it has become a sort of new plug-in, a stereotype standard of Western spiritualism, a neverland story of frivolous optimism and cynical tricksters. A pretty common case sounds like this. No matter how toxic, psychopath or narcissist someone had been, because as soon they get onto their yoga mat, mystical crystals, sound balls, vegan diet or ayahuasca smoothies, they will, by divine grace, cleanse their sins and the mess they have caused in their life and the life of others. Of course, 
a cleanse ritual boosted and sanctified by an Instagram story. And if, for some low vibrational reason or judgment, that doesn't work for the person, they gonna rely on the trauma-based formula to justify their actions as unconscious ones, even when they know perfectly what the fuck they are doing. Too much sage, too much smoke, but no fire. Of course, there are many exceptions and wonderful people in those so-called spiritual communities, people with wisdom and realistic expectations that knows what they're doing and contribute with the so important collective's healing process. But as always happens within trends and creeds, they tend to monopolize ideas and concepts and enclose them in a sandbox with the consequence of denying everything outside them that is not aligned with their beliefs and dogmas, imposing their vision and even their diet to others as the ultimate approach to save the world from humans' ego, patriarchal traumas, or any other kind of establishment propaganda. Humanizing and sugarcoating the wildness, dreaming of a unicorn land where fear, sacrifice, pain and death doesn't exist just by the will of their glittery intentions, ignoring the fact that the universe cannibalizes itself through the dance of Shiva like the Huraburus snake that swallows itself for the eternity. Nothing is free from fear, pain and sacrifice in existence. Even the stones are afraid by the ruthless rage of water. But the most dangerous aspect of all in this context is the consequences associated with taking part in esoteric rituals using psychoactive substance facilitated by sneaky shamans that tend to cuddle with demons every night and are more concerned about the boobs of La Gringa Pachamama. There's not a better window for spiritual or energetic corruption than those practices that requires you to be vulnerable in many ways. It's like keeping open the windows and front door of your house to let anything that wants to come in and out as the wind and can be the case that your house eventually is located in a drug dealing neighborhood full of addictions. Many of the modern shamanic rituals and spiritual retreats where the assistance backgrounds are unknown and not becoming a sort of all-you-can-eat party for entities that will not like the fun to be over. Let's fall for the enlightenment marketing agenda that sells you the idea that this is a prison and the freedom and ultimate truth is far away out there, only reachable through tireless transcendental meditation and hundred years of dedication. The same narrative repeats itself in many stages of our society. Even the space race is selling you the same idea, that our planet is a prison and our future is in the unreachable stars, looking for someone else out there to escape this cosmic isolation. Because according to them, what we got here is not enough, is too mundane or is dying. I don't know, I think it's more simple and less sophisticated than that. Because the fact is, every living creature is already enlightened because it's alive. They are part of the Divine's motion, of the Divine's plan. Another story is, if you want to conceive enlightenment as awakening. And that's pretty relative because as far as I know, intellectual faculties doesn't make you emotionally intelligent. As well knowledge doesn't end in wisdom as a general rule. I have met pretty ignorant people intellectually speaking that have more wisdom than any guru or so-called spiritual guide. Like the sweet old lady that's cooking those delicious tacos overnight at the same rusty corner for the last 20 years. As far as I respect and consider shamanic traditions and psychoactive substance as invaluable source of knowledge, they are also extremely dangerous in the hands of ignorance. I believe, we don't need any ritual, guru or substance to be spiritually in tune with the source. We just need to drop the bullshit, reduce the noise, listen to our inner voice and do the fucking work. I experience all this in my own flesh through my personal quest, but even with all the risk involved, I encourage you to answer the call if that's the case, 
But don't forget to follow your intuition and your higher self because they are the ultimate spiritual guide you will encounter in your lifetime. The spiritual path is not a walk in the park. It is an untamed domain that will require more sweat, tears and blood than any physical fight you can imagine. Where the toughest threat you will encounter is your own self. Not everybody is willing to sacrifice themselves for a cause, even less the items or lifestyle that represents their beliefs, passions, or what they think represents themselves. But also, spirituality is to accept and integrate the fact that we are part of the wicked machinery that depredate our ecosystem in a direct or incidental way. That doesn't take away the urge for our implication to make a difference. Nobody's free from sin and responsibility in this game. Like it or not, everybody has their hands stained in blood from those sacrificed in the name of progress, luxury, or the latest iPhone. We are children of the moon, born from its light but raised by its dark side, carrying grace and shame in the same body. We all are broken in some way or another. We had fallen for temptations again and again, and we're still doing it, but we don't care. We have been stung by the snakes from the green fake grass, and we all been walking through the fire, barefoot on broken glass. But here we go again, standing like a Soviet rocket, ready to reach the stars and win this wicked game. and the cognitive perception. Think about the advantage and power you can hold as the authority towards a society that ignores just where they are standing. A belief system goes beyond ideology, political parties or faith. It goes into the symbolic definition of a space-time. A process that begins at an early age where the individual has been trained and educated to perceive what the establishment only left them to see. On a cognitive level, the way we associate shapes, colors and sounds in relation with our environment plays a huge role in the inception of our belief system. Strings of communication are key in this process, being the language, the major conditioner of our thought articulation. We think in words, in names and concepts associated to things that represent our world. So the more narrow your vocabulary is, the more narrow your spectrum of reality will be. It may sound quite radical and may not fit many scenarios, but language has been designed not only for communication purpose, but as a cognitive threshold tool. Sometimes we need a description, a reference based on our personal database to knowledge something new or unknown. There is an interesting episode that happened back then in pre-colonization times in America, where only the tribe shaman were capable of seeing or identifying the Spanish caravels, because no one in the tribe, apart from him and his vision, never seen before a similar boat. And same with the horses and the riders, confusing the tribe to the point to believe they were looking at mythological creatures and demons. Who knows? Maybe they were right. As far as a pretty interesting episode and a great cognitive dissonance example, I don't buy at all the narrative about America's discovery. There's plenty of evidence of a previous global and sophisticated civilization beyond feeders and arrows. Back to the main topic. The spoken word is not just a modulated sound. It is a vibrational pattern that interacts not only with the mechanical function of the ears, but with the quantum field through vibrational wave particle functions, similar to photons. To put it bluntly, our words modify space-time, similar to our thoughts, but way more powerful. Have you ever heard of the living word? But not only sounds interact with our environment in a quantum level, our brain is the most powerful multidimensional machine, not quite yet understood by science, just the process of thinking and holding multiple thoughts while you are driving and analyzing the road is a multidimensional process. I like to use a radio analogy to explain this concept because actually it's a similar principle. 
There are thousands of radio stations playing music at the same time, but the reason they don't overlap is because they are all playing at different frequencies. You will need a receiver to tune in, the frequency you want to keep on, but it doesn't stop there, you will need enough bandwidth to reach and tune the whole range of stations. The same happens with altered dimensions, they all are already here, coexisting at the same time. So the better the quality of the electronic components, the better the reception of the frequency, and consequently, the better the music will sound. Following that analogy, you shouldn't be surprised that our society has been downgraded from premium hi-fi sound quality to an AM bandwidth shitty quality, a downgrade either through the diet, the media content, the lifestyle, fear of programming, and so on. According to science, the observer interacts with the manifestation of reality, rendering the physical dimension from his perspective and perception in a cohesive synergy. Nothing new from an esoteric and metaphysical perspective, but pretty telling about in which direction the paradigm of life in modern civilization is moving to. So your entire life is moving through energy, frequency and vibration, an invisible ecosystem that defines our ultimate physical reality. The Kingdom of Heaven There is a whole energetic ecosystem acting in the background, like the coding or algorithm that holds everything in place, like a magnetic spider web. There is a main source of energy from where everything comes from and different clusters or nodes that entangle, regulate and standardize that energy with their own attributes to imprint different styles and designs on the physical dimension. And just as a birthmark, your life will be determined since your birth by the influence of those nodes of power, common known as stars and planets, a cosmogony of intelligent energies that defines a big part of your personality, weaknesses and strength. Even the course of life, making of the firmament, the screenplay of this cosmic blockbuster. So, as the wind and water currents affect the direction of a sailboat, same happens with the cosmic winds that comes from the celestial bodies. There are winds that blows towards your desires, but there are others that blows against your will, slowing down your path and sometimes keeping you stuck in the same place for a long period of time. You have heard about Mercury retrograde transit and how much concern it causes in many people, because in general it tends to be a forecast of unwanted winds, but at the end everything depends on the intention of your direction, because in the eyes of the stars there's not a such thing as good or bad. They are only concerned about which of many directions is the one according to you. Everything comes from purpose. There's nothing random or untied in the wheel of existence. But that doesn't mean we are tied or stuck to one predetermined resolution as people understand destiny. Life and everything I know is like a tree. There is a main road as the trunk and many pathways as the branches. And you are the vital fluid that, from the root bottom, must get to the top, defying gravity to reach the sunlight to become a fruit. And you are the only one to decide if you want to go through the shorter and weaker branch to become a pale and sweetless fruit that falls before getting ripe. Or instead, you choose the high road, the longest and strongest branch, to become a beautiful and shiny sweet apple in the Eden but it comes with a price. You become more visible to snakes. Even the Bible and their characters are just archetypes of the transit and dynamics of those celestial bodies, making pretty clear that the kingdom of heaven is upon the stars. That doesn't take away the importance and the symbolic meaning of the tale. In fact, it becomes more important than ever to understand the different chapters of the spiritual warfare we are involved with. Almost every great and celebrated movie in history has elements of this narrative. Movies like Lord of the Rings or Star Wars. Archetypical movies about the celestial drama and their physical projection. 
That doesn't mean you should agree or take part in any dogmatic program from any religion, but we can deny the importance of the information that resides in them. Besides that, I personally like and feel identified with Archangels and their cosmogony, especially for their fearless and incorruptible loyalty they profess for their cause. Even my own name is entangled with this narrative. And the funny thing is that the Biblical character and I, we both talk about Babylon times. Of course, have I said over and over again, wisdom has been corrupted by the ones in power of the game, but time has shown they can't tear away the truth from life, but they can invert it and distort the meaning behind it. Like the symbol of Christ and how they illustrate the Holy Spirit in flesh as a human body with a crown made of thorns and crucified to a mutilated tree. As the ultimate religious symbol of love, compassion and sacrifice for others. More than a symbol of love and compassion, what I see is a clear declaration of intentions from an immoral and distorted institution that has more to do with smuggling your soul than saving it from hell. Ironically, they are the ones obsessed with the opening of the gates of Apollyon, the gates to the infra-world. The game over. And like any game half its rules, existence half its own. Karmic retribution is one of the most interesting regarding human dynamics, and believe it or not, the establishment plays the game under those rules. That's why exposing themselves through their media as fictional content accepts them from being judged by the stars, because according to the game, truth must be exposed or called in plain sight, while the contenders are the ones that must read the signs and decode them by themselves. Like it or not, the establishment are a fundamental piece of this game. They are the ones giving purpose to our courage, because courage and determination is the fuel of the universe, even beyond love or what people in general understand by that word. I've been playing this game and decoding those signs for the last 20 years. I've been witness how every stage of the messianic agenda and the divine prophecies has been accomplished through the years. I've seen how society has fallen for deception, betraying brothers and sisters for the sake of snakes and smoke and mirrors, and I'm aware of all the toxic programming that we have been exposed to, but this is just the beginner's level of the wicked game they want to make us participate in as a special guest. But also, I've seen how palm trees under a tropical storm don't break or fly away, because they are flexible enough to bend to the ground, because their roots are bigger and stronger from what you can tell. There is a storm coming, and of course they know it, but what they don't know is from which direction the storm is coming. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe and like this podcast. My name is Jeremiah Slosher, and I'm your host from Alter Dimensions. Lights and weapons look the same